So in my house, we take opportunities where we can get them. And since both of the cats are currently sleeping, I thought that I would try and record two videos in one day. We'll see how well this goes. My name is Jen and I am the Uncreative Crafter and this is take two on my Russian supported spindling demo. Uh, I have my new iPad, which was my Christmas present, and so you're not getting the Periscope vertical video, you're getting the full benefit of actually being able to see a little bit more what I do with my hands. So uh, we will hopefully make this short and somewhat informative, and you'll actually be able to see what I'm doing, which will be helpful. So if you've never done supported spinning before and if you've done any wheel spinning or drop spindling supported spinning is kind of a different beast um, you need a couple of extra tools which are pretty easy to acquire and you can make them as expensive or inexpensive as you like i like to take off any jewelry when i'm spinning because i don't like getting stuff caught in rings or watches because inevitably that's what i do anyway let's pull out the supported spindle and show you what she looks like this is my super fancy case. It is uh, just mostly to protect the tips. The supported spindle, at least the one I have, has two very sharp tips. So here she is, isn't she pretty? So we've got pointy number one, and we've got pointy number two. And I can't tell you how many times that I have poked myself um, in the hand or I have dropped it and stabbed myself in the chest or you know, whatever practically poked my own eye out, but that's just how I roll. So this is the heavier end of the spindle. You can kind of tell from the carvings that this is gonna be the heavier end. And so this is the end that's actually gonna be doing the spinning. And the twist is gonna be added to my fiber with this pointy end. You also need uh, basically a small bowl or curved surface. I've seen people use like candle sticks, the bottom of candle sticks for this. And basically this is just providing this pointy tip a nice surface to spin in um, where it's not going to have any friction or cause it to basically slow down. So I just bought like a $1.50 bowl from a closeout store. You know, it works for me. There is a little bit of room for the spindle to move in the bowl, um, but it's not enough to really distract me. So I'm not going to pretend like I'm some kind of spinning expert. I've only been supported spinning. I got this at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool, so that would have been May of 2015, and this is only the second thing I've ever spun on this. But um, this is a good uh, so sort of spindle to use if you're spinning shorter fibers because you're not dealing with the weight of gravity pulling on your singles. That's how a drop spindle operates, is uh, you've got that spin and you're drafting up and the spinning and the gravity is what's adding the twist in your yarn. However, if you've ever done drop spindling, <laughs> and you probably um, have dropped it more than once as the fibers either break or you, you don't add enough twist or there's just not enough fiber there. And so you're left sort of with the frustration of having to pick it up and start all over again. So this, you're not working against gravity at all uh, because it's just sitting on the table. Uh, let's see if I can move that back so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so obviously I've been working on this a little bit already, and I actually already have a piece attached. This is a mixture of fibers that I didn't write down, but it's the same one I did in my last supported spinning demo. So it is merino wool. There is some angora bunny in here. I believe there's some silk, some tencel, and some angelina and firestar. So pretty short fibers that I might be fighting with on the wheel. I would really have to pay, I feel like, a lot of attention to this on a wheel and be treadling pretty fast to get the twist in quick enough to keep those fibers all together. So I am spinning from the fold. So all I'm doing for that, if you've never spun from the fold before, is I have a chunk of fiber that I've just pulled off. I'm folding it over my finger and I'm basically pulling out fibers and that's sort of my little drafting triangle right there. You are doing uh, a probably a different drafting technique than what you do on the wheel. I sort of do like a little short, I think it's called the inchworm, where I'm just pinching a little bit back, adding a little bit of twist, letting it go. And so I'm not getting a lot of twist added to my fiber all at once. So on this one, I'm doing what's called a long draw and it was quiet the whole rest of the day. What's up with that? Okay. 
Uh, and so hopefully you'll be able to see my arm and my hand a little bit better because in the periscope video you could really only see like this much of me and so you couldn't really see what my hand was doing. So I'm going to move this all the way over here uh, and hopefully that will give you a nice line of sight for what I'm doing. Uh, so I am spinning in a clockwise direction. You always want to remember to spin your singles in the same direction so do what you got to do. If that means putting it on videos and putting it on YouTube then that's what you got to do. But anyway, um, and something, again, that I mentioned in the last demo I did, but I feel like is not really clear in a lot of videos, is this is where your twist is getting added. You will see people spinning the supported spindles, and to me it wasn't super clear that you're flicking your unspun fiber against this tip, because that's where your twist is getting added. Maybe that sounds super obvious, I don't know. But as a newbie supported spinner on a Russian-style supported spindle, I didn't take any lessons, I just went to YouTube and looked. So anyway, I've got some partially spun stuff here. I'm going to add a little bit more twist because I have nothing holding the twist in right now. And this is pretty loosey-goosey and this is going to fall apart. It's obviously got some twist in it because it is twisting back on itself, but I want to add more. So I am gonna... Alright. I am just flicking the fiber. And I like to spin in a little sort of protective cradle because this was an expensive enough spindle. And I actually will even let it rest against my thumb. So I'm not adding a ton of twist at one time, uh, but I feel a little bit more secure. So I am pulling my fibers out and you can see now, hopefully, they're a little bit less loosey-goosey. I'm gonna let them twist back on themselves and oh yeah, there's some nice twist added in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to untwist it while holding my fiber taut because I don't want to let that new twist out. I'm going to pull it back the other way, so counterclockwise, and I'm basically just going to wind it on. And if you've done drop spindling, you know exactly what I'm doing right here as I'm making a cop. So I want to come up. I don't want a super long amount left, but I do want enough room and twist in here that when I pull back a little bit, some of the twist is gonna travel up into this part of the drafting triangle. So let's do it right now. And it's probably pretty difficult to see still. I really gotta come up with a better way to show this to you, but I haven't come up with it yet. Actually, let's see if I put the bowl in my lap, if that'll do it. Maybe, maybe not. So you can still kind of see. All right, see what I said? Runaway spindle. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of twist I'm going to slowly draw back. And you can see it's making a very fine single. Like so fine that you actually almost can't see it. So I probably should have worn a black shirt. As I start to feel that it's not, the twist isn't traveling up as much, I'm going to add a little bit more twist in. And I always like to sort of err on the side of caution. So I, I add a little bit of twist and then I pull back. And then I add a little bit of twist and I pull back. That's just me. I feel a little bit more secure doing it that way, but your mileage may vary. I see that uh, towards the end of my single, it's starting to lose the twist. So I'm adding a bit more in. So you can see that tip there. And I am pulling back and the twist is traveling up. And uh, ideally you will do this to the full length of your arm if you're capable. Uh, obviously if your arm starts to hurt or if you have medical reasons not to do that, please do not overextend your arm. But the longer you can make your arm go, the more single you've got before you have to wind it on, which leads you, um, it gives you some availability to move up and down the shaft of the spindle more so you don't have everything clumped all up once together because it's so short. So I've got pretty short arms because I'm a pretty short girl. So I'm now at the end of my rope, literally. And also figuratively, that was an unintended pun. No, I totally meant that. So um, I'm going to, again, let the fibers twist back on themselves, the single. And since I see that it's got some good twist in there, I'm pretty comfortable with that. I'm gonna add just a little bit more, like I said, stabbing yourself in the chest. And then I'm gonna, again, unwind it while holding it taut. And I'm gonna go up and down the shaft until I'm right about back here. And then I'm gonna start the process all over again. I am planning on doing this as a two-ply, so uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to spin up half of it and then have two plying balls or if I'm going to do it from a center pull ball. Um, 
but the process is the same. You're just going to be going the opposite direction. Um, and this is basically my supported spinning demo. Hopefully this was a little bit better quality and a little bit more helpful to you. If you haven't seen the first one, I'm not going to recommend it just because I feel like the quality is not good enough that you can see what I'm doing. But if you have any questions on this, like I said, I'm not an expert, but I'm happy to do my best. Or if there's something you'd like to see a little bit more of, maybe I can get my husband to help me um, take a video. I'm not sure. But anyway, I hope you found this helpful and you have a lovely day.